we're going to solve some problems using multiplication. So let's look what we have here. We got 4 is equal to x divided by some number. I'm sorry, 4 is equal to some number divided by 2. That's going to equal to 4. Well, what we're doing to this x is we're dividing it, right? So your inverse operation of division is multiplication. So if we're going to get this x by itself, we've got to multiply it by 2. If we multiply this side by 2, we've got to multiply this side by 2. These cancel out. So we're just left with x. And what's happening? you got x over 2 is 2 over 1. That's equal to 2x over 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So you're just left with x, right? So we're just left with x. So 2 times 4 is 8. So what we know is 8 is equal to x, or x is equal to 8. Let's check that by plugging it in. 8 divided by 2 is 4, and 4 is equal to 4, so we got the right answer. So once we, let's look at another example. We're dividing our, our variable. The inverse operation of division is multiplication. So we're going to take our x divided by 3 is equal to negative 12. We're going to undo this by multiplying both sides by the denominator, the bottom number, right? Which is 3. These 3's, 3 divided by 3 is 1, so you're left with x. If we divided this side by 3, we've got to divide our negative 12 by 3. Let's go ahead and write our negative sign, right? Because a negative divided by a positive is a negative. I just find it's uh, good practice to write the sign first. You don't have to. So negative 12 divided by 3 is 4. So we got a negative 4. I didn't miss my sign because I already put it down there. Let's look at this problem. We've got A, some number A. We're dividing it by 2. And we're getting negative 2.5. Well, what could A be? What, what number... When you cut it in half, is a negative 2.5. Well, let's use our inverse operation. So since we've got this division sign here, we're going to multiply the bottom number, or both sides by the denominator, which is 2. These cancel out, so I'm just left with a is equal to negative 5. And that makes sense, because if I do negative 5 divided by 2, I get negative 2.5. Then we've got P. We're dividing P by 4, some number P. We're going to get 11. Well, to figure out what P is, we're going to multiply both sides by our denominator, which is 4. 4 divided. And these numbers are actually being divided, right? 4 divided by 4 left, leaves us with 1P. 11 times 4 is 44. And that makes sense because if you take 44 and you divide it by 4, you get 11. But what if you, we had something that looked like this? You had 2x over 4 is equal to 2. And we're going to look at some of these problems later. But if you're in my class, we're going to get these down first before we move on to these slightly more complicated ones. But it's really the same, same thing that we've been doing. So a little preview here. We're going to multiply both sides by the denominator because our inverse operation of division is multiplication. These fours cancel, so I'm just left with the 2x over here. That's equal to 8. And now we're going to solve this one by division. So you see it won't be long. We'll be combining a couple of these operations in these problems, which is why it's so critical that you understand each of these steps in isolation before we start putting them together because if you can do them in isolation when we get something that looks slightly more complicated like this you just see hey it's it's just what we've been doing but it's just two steps instead of one good luck